Well, it's been a while since we've done an update. Uh, things have changed around here a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, a little just bit. a little bit. So Eric doesn't work for us full time anymore. Uh, freelances around. Um, Zach doesn't work here anymore. So the only people that are left here are me, Batman, Keith, and Doug. So you can imagine the personalities we have, if you really think about it, because Bruce doesn't talk a whole lot. When Keith does talk, you can't hear him. And Doug gets uncomfortable in situations uh, that I talk about anyway, so I try not to talk to Doug. But, so we're here, we're working, everything's jamming. Um, I'm working on my truck. So we've got, when? SEMA is November 4th through the 7th this year and I want to take my truck to SEMA. Right now, it was at Gap Racing for a while in Houston. He did the roll cage, headers, exhaust, did some bed work for me. Um, and now it's at Slosh Tubs, getting the inner fenders built for the front. And I feel sorry for old Mike over at Slosh Tubs because he's having a really hard time with this Ford situation. Everything he's ever done is Chevrolet. He's never built any Ford stuff. Um, he's getting hate mail. He's having mental blocks. I don't think his mind can think that sophisticated as far as Fords go. He's like having some problems. He's used to Chevrolet. Everything's just easy with the Chevy. So um, trying to get all my body work done. The bed was a big deal for us to get knocked out um, just because it has the most body work to do. Everything, oh, it's just a bed. Well, it's top, bottom, inside and out of both bedsides, plus the front panel and a tailgate. So as far as square footage wise, this is probably more square footage to do body work on than the rest of the entire truck. Um, tailgate's kind of a little bit of a beating. You can see on the darker spots, that's low. Um, but this is an original 68 tailgate. Um, all I did on it was, so usually here it says Ford here because it's a single stamp tailgate on the other side. So you'd read Ford backwards, which I didn't necessarily care that it did that. But with the bed floor being raised because how low the truck is, it kind of cut the letters off halfway. And with them being cut off halfway, my OCD was really killing me. So I just uh, had this piece sheared off at a 16 gauge and panel bonded it down and then body worked it to the tailgate. Um, tailgate's coming along, but since 1968, it's had a lot of stuff dropped on it and used. And so it's got a little, little work. And in here, we raised the bed floor up, I think like six or seven inches. It's not, but well you can see the difference in these two beds. But the bed floor is out of a Bronco. Um, Hammer, Levi over at Hammer Fab um, started all the bed floor stuff on it. I had Gap finesse a couple things for me whenever it was there, just because it was there. Um, the tubs are shorter than stock, wider than stock, and shorter than stock because they didn't need to be as long if they weren't as, as tall. So that's done. The gas filler, we did a video a long time ago. I think it was part of one of our videos um, where we tore up my dad's van with a forklift. Did we video that or was that just us being uh, in the parking lot? I think he videoed it. Mm. No, he stuck a GoPro up, but it was in picture mode. Oh, well, I've got, I've got a picture that you can insert here, but this is the gas door off my dad's van that we demolished with a forklift. Um, so everything's pretty close to being done. I mean, we've got to do the bed floor, some body work in the bed floor, finish that tub. That tub's about done. The bedsides are pretty good. This back panel's got to be blocked. Bed's coming along. If I can get the bed done, it's a huge stress reliever for me um, as far as all the body work that's going to be done on the truck. I had a PDR guy come out, uh, DFW dent repair, and he PDR'd my roof, my doors, some spots on the cab, and got a lot of stuff out that I couldn't normally get out because it was in places I couldn't get to. You know what I'm saying? Slide hammer wasn't getting out. So he pushed it. Um, everything looks awesome. That dude did some work. Did some really good work. My truck, my truck looked good. What he did on Steve Mills' truck was impressive. Dense that I didn't think he was going to get out. So um, it's coming along. I'm real happy with it just trying to stay as focused as I can on it. We're still trying to make money so we can stay in business. Um, but we're gonna drive it to SEMA. I've got a couple buddies that are going with me. Steve bought his, uh, so two years ago, I guess, we drove to SEMA. Um, Steve had the 53 five window Chevy truck. He actually bought it back. Um, he's gonna drive it 
It's got an SLP supercharger on it. We're pulling it off, put a Whipple on it. Um, Todd is taking his C10, the 85. Uh, blue and white, it's got gold wheels on it, and it's got a stock LS3 in it with a cam, but we're gonna put a Whipple blower on it. I think uh, Brian Whitney's going with a 71 C10. He's driving, we're trying to get him to put a Whipple on his. Mine's going, and then whoever else wants to come. Steve Mills talked about coming if he gets his truck done in time. I don't see Steve Mills getting on the road for 12 days though. It's, it's not a normal trip. It, it was such an, it was seeing parts of the, the country that you don't see because everybody that travels stays on the highways. And with yeah. us going all the side roads and back roads and little towns, we saw stuff that you really, I mean, honestly, you wouldn't see any of this stuff unless you were lost. You'd have to be lost to see any of this stuff, like accidentally lose your way or you live there. Super cool. I'm very excited to do it again. I'm excited to do it in my truck, one that I know is not going anywhere. I wish I hadn't have sold my 49, but at the same time, it funded other things at the time. So maybe one day I'll own it again. Steve bought his back. Maybe I can buy mine back. Yeah, that stoked me out when I saw that he bought his back. Me too. I mean, there was things he didn't like about it, and I think that's why he sold it after that trip was just kind of a beating. You know, he had a speed density computer in it, so he had problems um, trying to get the truck to go up and out uh, elevation. Yeah, so, I think the biggest kicker was whenever we all went up to the top of Pike Peak and his truck died halfway up and he just couldn't get it. After that, the trip went really fast, you yeah. know, like, so it was just kind of a beating. But, you know, changing his truck to a um, mass airflow and going uh, with a Whipple, you know, SLP, is, it's a great blower. But he had issues because they didn't make a blower for the offset accessories. So then he got different accessories for the front of it. He wanted to run Camaro accessories, but they wouldn't fit in the frame. So we did some work on it. And what it ended up having to be is a really long belt. So every time he got into it, the belt slipped and then it would squeak. So I, I, mentally, I think he's just over it. So now he's doing the same thing we did on Rich's car when we took the SLP off of it. And it's a, a it'll be a Whipple 2.9 with the Wegner front drive, eight rib setup. So he's not gonna have a problem slipping a belt at all. Um, I think that'll, that'll help the mental status of that truck. Cause that was really the only thing that was wrong with it was not being able to go up high elevation, which that's where we saw some of the prettiest stuff was all up in the mountains and that's all he did. Whenever we got up in elevation, that's when he had problems. And I think the fun went out the window for him. Oh, absolutely. So hopefully this go around, uh, he'll have a little more fun with it. So we're getting there. My truck, I'm trying to keep it as quiet as possible. So it's got, um, I tried to mimic the exhaust um, after like a new Mustang. So it's got Roush uh, active mufflers on it. Same ones we put on our international and um, did three inch exhaust with vibrant, super quiet resonators. Got a big X pipe in it. Um, so I'm hoping, hoping it'll be quieter. And I got the mufflers kind of like a Mustang too, where they're at the very back. So instead of my mufflers being underneath the truck, my mufflers are behind the, wheel, the rear tire. And that's why this is here. Cause it got so close that I had to have a place to turn the exhaust tips down. So the bed's cut out and it'll be behind the bumper. And then in like 60, I don't remember what year exactly, on like 60 to 66 Chevys, when they had like a, the rear bumper that looked like the front bumper, mm -hmm. they had like a fill plate. So if I put the tailgate on, the bumper on, and I can still see the tips and I'm disgusted by it, we're gonna build a panel that goes over it and it'll bolt on to like a hanger that comes off the bumper brackets. Mm -hmm. But it'll fill that void in to, to eliminate it. I'm not super excited about having to cut this for the tips to come out but I'll live with this if my truck's quiet. <laughs> Cause I want- You won't see it at the end of the day. You won't really. And I mean, the only reason why anybody's gonna look at it is if they watch this YouTube video and they're like, oh, let me see what he did. So. Yeah, and unfortunately I promised everyone a Frankenstein update. Mm. I forgot that the truck was gone. It's not here. So you just get the, you just get the party half. Yep. The business, the business half is gone, the party half is. Yeah, I didn't even think about it not being here when we talked about you coming. You know, I think I should, yeah, I think we should do the whole ride to SEMA. I should just ride in the back of the truck the whole time. Nope, because I'm spending way too much time on the west end above this. You ain't gonna scratch my <laughs> shit. But that's it, man. I, I mean, I've got a lot to do on my truck, but not a lot to do, as weird as that sounds. If Losh gets the um, inner fenders done, radiator and stuff's already mounted. Motor and trans are in, done. I mean, they'll come back out, obviously, but um, when it gets back, I need to mock up my computers 
put a hole in the firewall, uh, figure out where the electric e-brake is gonna go and the battery are gonna go. And after those few things are finished, the truck's gonna come apart, put the bed or the cab on a rotisserie, bodywork the bottom side of the cab, firewall and like above the firewall, like where the cowl is, you know, bodywork all that and down the sides. And then I'm gonna paint the bottom, paint the firewall, have the chassis powder coated. When it comes back, final assemble everything, brakes will go on. Actually, I probably won't do the brakes. It'll probably just be the front hubs and, and axles like, like it is now. Um, but the motor and transmission will be final installed with clutch and everything. Drive shaft will go in. Um, because whenever I put the cab back on, I will have already painted the entire inside of the truck will be painted the firewall and um, the bottom of the cab, and then we'll bolt it all together and bodywork it together like that. We've done that in the last few cars. It's really worked out pretty good. The Challenger, we painted the bottom side of it, put the motor and all the suspension in, and then just bodyworked it and painted it. Did good. The Corvette was good. Um, so I'm gonna try to do my truck the same way, help expedite it. So if there's ever a time where I'm slow or say the cab is finished and we've got it blown apart, we could be putting other stuff together, not waiting for the truck to get West and buff. So I'm hoping that'll expedite the, the process enough where we can, you know, get it done. I would like to, I really don't think there's anything that we're doing to the truck that's out of the ordinary where I won't, where I'll feel uncomfortable driving it. I think I was a little more up for the adventure when we took the yellow and the blue truck, like kind of a challenge. But I also don't want my truck stuck on the side of the road somewhere if it breaks down, but we're not doing anything weird. You know what I mean? Like it's not gonna be, it's just not gonna be a weird truck. Nothing that I would think that's gonna break down. We've done enough Coyotes where I feel completely confident in our, our build along with Cody's tune. So I don't think we're gonna have an issue there. The only thing that would, could mess up would be like a malfunction of another part. But if it's manual trans, I mean, if I lose third gear, then we just don't use third. If we don't, if we lose reverse for some reason, then we just park where we just pull out of and not back out of. So. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything to keep us from getting there. So it's going to be a good trip. I think everybody's going to have fun. It's a completely different mindset this go around than it was last time. I think we're taking an extra day, day and a half or so. Uh, so we're going to leave uh, November 1st. So be here for Halloween with the kiddos and then meet up here this that next morning um, and leave. I'm hoping the trailer will be completely loaded before, like as far as with tools, spares, gas, everything um on the 30th and then we'll have the 31st halloween with the kiddos and meet up here throw your last minute luggage in the trailer and and haul we'll probably bring the big trailer because we want to bring enough gas for everybody so we don't have to stop with that many cars i don't want to have to stop inconsistently between each other before it was just me and yeah, because Steve, time, we got last five time cars. We had to stop on the side of the road to fill his blue Chevy up because yeah. he only had what a ten-gallon tank. Yeah, so he's changing his tire size. It felt like ten gallons. We stopped like every hundred and ten miles or something. Yeah, it was horrible. Miles, we had to stop. So um, he's talking about changing the rear end gears. It's got three seventy-threes in the back. I think he's going to go to like a three twenty-five. So he should get a little better gas mileage. Mm -hmm. um, I got a twenty-five gallon tank, so I, I probably won't need to stop very often at all. Um, yeah, so the trailer will be gas, tools, impacts, jacks, and then be used for strictly if somebody breaks down. And then that'll do it. That's it for me.